Hi guys, this current challenge is called insert a node at the tail of a linked list. So a linked list is a data structure in programming, which we use to store data. And it's pretty fast because we have many nodes and every node has a pointer to the next node. So unlike indices in arrays, the nodes are not stored in contiguous fashion in memory. There are lots of resources on the web that you can read to better understand how linked lists work. But here, what we need to do is write a function to insert a node at the tail of a list. When we say the tail of a linked list, we mean the end of a linked list. This means that we're going to get a node and we need to insert that node at the end of the linked list. When you're using vectors, what you do normally is use the pushback function. But here, what we need to do is traverse the linked list and insert our nodes at the end of the list. So in order not to confuse you too much, I'm just going to go through the top of the text editor here and there is some code that we cannot touch so if you look here you can see we have a struct so that is the struct corresponding to a node so that node here has a member variable called data and inst type that node is supposed to store an integer and then it has a pointer to another node in the list and you know it's another node in the list because the type of the pointer is the same as the name of that struct. So this is the C version here. You can see I have C selected here. We are supposed to return a node pointer and the parameters are the head in our list and the data. So the data is going to be the integer that we need to add at the end of the list. So we need to create a node, add that data to the node and insert that node at the end of the list. So how do we do that? Well, we simply have a variable that we call nodes. So that node is a node pointer. That's why I have singly linked list nodes and it's a pointer. And then what I do here is I allocate memory to store a new node in memory. So what I have here is the malloc function. So this is going to allocate memory and the argument that we pass it here is the size that we want. So in between the parentheses for that function, we can specify the size of memory that we need. So it's kind of like a request that we are making. We want enough memory to store a node. That's why I have size of, and then for that size of function, I simply have the singly linked list node. So whatever size a node requires is what we're going to request using the malloc function. But this returns a void pointer. So we need to cast that pointer to a singly linked list node pointer. And that's why I have parentheses and then the node and the pointer. So when we are done with this, this node is going to be an empty node in memory. And we can now have that node use the arrow notation because it's a pointer. So we can't use dots. We need to use the arrow notation. And we are going to set the data inside that node to the data passed here, the parameter. So again, we are able to do that because if you scroll up here, you can see that we have this member variable called data. So we can initialize that member variable just like this. So right now we only have a, a single node we don't know what we need to point to next. Maybe we don't need to point to anything. We simply have our next member variable here set to null. So null is a null pointer, meaning we are pointing to nothing. And again, if I scroll up here, we have this next pointer here for every node. So it's a pointer, but it's pointing to nothing. That's why we have nodes next equals null. Now it's possible that the heads is going to be empty, meaning that our list is going to be empty. In other words, we don't have any head yet or any tail yet. And that's what they specify here. The given head pointer may be null, meaning that the initial list is empty. So if the list is empty, what we need to do is return the current node. And how you know that we need to do that is if you scroll down to their code here, they have this node pointer and they have the head here. And then they want to insert the node at the tail of the list and return the head. But because the head is null, then whatever node that we create here in our function needs to be returned so that this node becomes the head because previously our list was empty. Now we have this node created. So we need to specify that this node is now the first node in our list and therefore it is the head of the list. Once we've taken care of that here, we can continue in our function and say that if we have not returned from that function here, meaning that the list wasn't empty and we can have a temporary variable that we will use to traverse our linked lists. So this temp variable is going to be a node pointer and we want to set it to the head of the node. So it's also going to point to the head of the node in our list. So once we have this temp variable, we can have a while loop and say that so long as we can access another node via the next pointer at every iteration, 
we want to move our temp variable forward. So let's say we have node one, node two. Node one is pointing to node two, meaning that the next member variable here, the next pointer for node one is not going to be equal to null. It's going to be equal to the address of node two. So in this case, we can move temp to equal node two because temp next is going to be the address of node two. So we will advance our temp variable by moving it to equal node two. So the moment we reach the end of the list, our last node is going to point to null. So that's when this will stop switching. Temp is going to be equal to the last node inside our list. And then we can say temp next, which is currently null, will be equal to node. And node is the node that we've created here at the top and assigned the data that we had here as a parameter. So that new node is going to be the new end or the new tail of our list. Once we are done with that, then we simply return the head. So I'm going to run this code now and we've passed sample test case zero and also sample test case one. Let me submit it. And then I'm going to show you the C++ version. So we've passed all the test cases now. I'm going to drop down here, switch to C++. I already have my code, I believe. And one thing to notice is that in C++ here, we are using a class. So it has public member variables. So the first one is data, which is an int. And we also have a node pointer. So same thing as in C, but the thing that you will notice here is this one. We have a constructor to which we can pass an int variable or an int value and initialize our data member variable. And also the next pointer, instead of having null, they are using null PTR. It's the same thing, it's still a null pointer. So now we can go back to our function and see what is different. Well, in C, we were using the malloc function to request for memory or to allocate memory for our nodes. Here we are just using the new keyword in C++. So this is going to allocate memory for a new node and then return us a node pointer. But that new node here, we are calling the constructor, we are passing it data. And data here is from this parameter. So this node is going to be instantiated and the member variable data is going to be initialized with the value here from the parameter and then it's going to be stored in node so that node is going to be that new node that we're creating here and again the same thing repeats here so if our list is empty we simply need to return this new node because that node is going to be the first node in our list otherwise we can have a temporary variable pointed to the heads of the list and then traverse our lists just like we did in the c version of the code and then at the end we add our new nodes to the end of the list. So it's going to be the new tail. And then we return the head. So it's the same thing. The, the only changes I could make also just to confirm is null PTR here, just to prove that it's the same thing as having the null keyword. So this is the null pointer. And we also change the malloc function to the new keyword here. So let me run this code now. And we've passed sample test case zero and again, sample test case one. So I just need to submit this code now and make sure that we pass all the nine test cases and we just did. So that's it for the hacker rank challenge called insert a node at the tail of a linked list. In the future, I'll be making more videos on data structures and also on linked lists. But in the meantime, if you like my solution in C and also my solution in C++, please subscribe to this channel, turn on your notifications, drop your questions in the comment section and I'll catch you next time. Bye.